Direct, syncopated, hostile, and aggressive. Michael Jackson's blood on the dance floor helped him push his work into darker territories. This song describes a predatory woman named Susie who seduces Jackson before plotting to stab him with a knife. Now I know we've discussed the full album before on this channel, but today we decided to talk about the inspiration, production, release, and legacy of the soul single Blood on the Dance Floor. Before we begin, remember to like to subscribe and share for more content just like this. Sit back, relax, and welcome back to Iconic. The lyrics tell the story of a femme fatale trying to ensnare a man. Blood is on the dance floor, blood is on the knife, sang the king of pop. Clearly, he was not yet done with the wicked woman narrative. Teddy Riley found the coincidence surprising. It was like he prophesied that record, he recalled in an interview. He felt its mood, written in Jackson's signature third-person style akin to other songs in his catalog a la Beat It and Smooth Criminal. With origins as far as the 1990 Dangerous Sessions, the groove yeah. stops and the chords go out with the choir to go into the strings I'm gone too soon. I think that'll work great. Now, this isn't final, though. You know, plus something's got to go, either by editing or by deletion. Editing. <laughs> Jam. Trip. In the closet. She drives, drives me wild. wild. Remember, Remember the, the time? time? Can't, Can't let her get away. away. Someone put, put your, your hand, hand up. Black, black and white. white. Who, Who is it? Will Would you be there? there? Gone, gone too soon. Heal, heal the world. world. Blood on the blood dance. dance floor. In danger house. Michael heard Riley's song ideas, he chose the one that had been written on that fateful night. Despite being unaware of the context that had given rise to the song, Michael wrote a catchy melody reusing the syncopated verse and ethereal refrain combination that had made the fame and fortune of many of his songs, such as Smooth Criminal. Michael recalled in an interview, Actually I didn't create the title, my engineer thought of the title. Bill Bottrell had come up with that title. Blood on the Dance Floor was a song I wrote for MJ during the sessions when Dangerous was written, sometime in 1988. I thought I'd be a clever salesman and I teased Michael about this great song I had called Blood on the Dance Floor. He was out of town, and I was trying to tweak the song, and this went on for weeks. He was really intrigued, so much so that before he ever heard what I did, he wrote his own Blood on the Dance Floor. Jackson listened carefully to the tapes Riley brought with him and instantly loved what he heard. The tracks used different chords than he was accustomed to, the rhythms were fresh and edgy, the beats swung with velocity and hit like sledgehammers. During the dangerous sessions, various tracks began to take priority, including Remember the Time and In the Closet. Jackson wouldn't resume work on Blood until nearly seven years later. It wasn't quite finished, Riley says. There were still some vocal parts missing. Michael loved the song, but he would listen to it and say, I like what you did here, but we still need this here. He was a perfectionist. For the music video Michael reached out to longtime collaborator Vincent Patterson to turn his funky and energetic songs into video. The music video centered on Susie seducing Jackson in a courtship dance, before opening a switchblade. The choreographer remembered that Michael had not been very disciplined during their last collaboration, which had been the 1993 Super Bowl halftime show due to his very busy work schedule at the time. So, Patterson agreed to work with Michael again, but on the condition that the singer work harder. As for the video project, he suggested that Michael should use it to change his image so that he would appear more masculine, almost macho. The scenario Patterson wrote saw Michael walk into a club packed with a myriad of characters, each with his or her own story to tell and dance to perform. Patterson gave the famous Susie, who is mentioned in the song, a key role in the script, queen of the dance floor, she breaks into a routine with the intent to seduce the singer. 
Sybil Azur, a dancer who had previously worked with Patterson on other projects, was chosen for the role. The project's budget was as tight as its deadlines. Patterson recycled ideas he'd had for Jam a few years before. This allowed him to introduce the spiral staircases he hadn't been able to use back then. Rehearsals began, and Michael wasn't able to make the time he had planned. Patterson changed his roadmap and adapted his ideas to suit Michael's schedule. The dance routines, full of salsa influences, took shape as Michael and Sybil Azur grew accustomed to each other while rehearsing their dances together. His eyes were almost closed shut, and it's like I've never seen him look icier in my life. And it was, that was trippy. You know, it's like, uh, the way he looks in the video of Blood on the Dance Floor, which he hated, but I loved, and if you look at his eyes, he looks so cool. You know, they're almost shut, and it's like, he just looks incredibly cool. Blood on the Dance Floor was released on March 21, 1997. The music premiered on Top of the Pops. Strangely, the song would not be promoted as a single in the US Riley says Jackson didn't mind in this case. He figured people in America would find it if they really wanted it. He wasn't worried about it. Globally, however, the song thrived, reaching the top 10 in 15 countries, and hitting number 1 in 3, including the UK. It also proved ripe for remixes and received frequent play in clubs and dance routines. Left off Jackson's two major studio albums that decade, Blood, ironically became one of Jackson's most durable rhythm tracks of the 90s. It would be the only track from the remix album Jackson would perform on the History World Tour. According to J. Randy Tara Borelli's biography Michael Jackson The Magic, The Madness, The Whole Story, like much of what Michael did at this time, being the late 90s, was lost in the ongoing controversy of his world, the ongoing confusion about children, Lisa Marie, Debbie Rowe. Without that, this stellar work would no doubt have found an appreciative audience. He also wrote that because of its weak showing Sony executives no longer viewed Michael as being invincible. Heads would not roll, it was learned, if he had a flop record, or if he was unhappy with the company. After Blood on the Dance Floor disappointed in the USA, he was never a company priority again. As a whole, Blood on the Dance Floor is a Jackson oddity. The uncharacteristic surprise release in the midst of an existing album cycle, as well as an album unsure of its intention. For many a fan, the inclusion of a bounty of remixes, and there are some stunning reinterpretations here, muddied the waters and took the focus off what could have been a powerful EP of new tracks. As such, Blood on the Dance Floor is often overlooked when considering Jackson's full body of work. Jackson told Riley he believed the song was going to be a smash. He explained it like this, a hit is a song that stays on the charts for a week or two. A smash is a song that stays up there for six weeks, Riley says. He felt Blood on the Dance Floor was a smash.